Hello, this is DiamondGuy36, and today I'm going to show you a little bit of a simulation tool that I've made on scratch.mit.edu. This simulates in two dimensions the Minecraft explosion algorithm. Now, I should probably quickly explain how that works, um, and to do so would probably be best in paint. Yep. Um, so, say that we were to have our explosion source here, which I'll mark in red. So this is our TNT or our fireball or whatever. And then we've got blocks around it with different explosion resistances. We've got a block here and a block here and a block here and a block here and a block here. So say that these blocks have different explosion resistances for example, black has uh, 20, and yellow has 30, and blue has 40. Um, so what the what Minecraft is going to do is it's going to make these invisible rays, which can be displayed using mods, and they're going to start with the explosion power that um, the explosion source has. So say the uh, it had a power of 80, and it was, um, what it would do is, since the black has an explosion resistance of 20, it would subtract 20, and now it has an explosion, the ray has an explosion power of 60, runs into the blue, and now it has 20 because that's 40, and if we were to run into another black uh, square, then it would be, um, it would, the ray would be stopped because it's, uh, it, its explosion power is 20, and the square has an explosion resistance of 20 or higher, um, and that's basically how basically how it works. And it just casts hundreds of these rays, just does more and more going in each direction. You can just imagine like a spider web of these things, um, and then yeah, that's what I've recreated here. So if I hit the start button. And I should probably go full screen. I can use my number keys to select different colors, and uh, depending on which number it is, it's going to have a higher uh, explosion resistance. So, one is this pink color. So I can, like, put some of that down. And then two is purple, and so on. Maybe some green. And, um, yeah, you get the point. So I'm going to draw this, and then. Um, I will speed this part up, but I'm going to have it, I'm, I'm going to have it, I'm going to hit Q, and it'll basically cast these rays out, and it's got the set explosion power, and you can see it's only going so far, because those, um, specific colors have blast resistances, which are canceling it out, um, and so I can increase this a little bit, and it should go through, um, the other colors better. Um, on the slider, so I'll try having a link to this in the description. Um, because uh, yeah, I'll just share it, and then I can you can just uh, play with this for yourself. It does take a while to render. I recommend putting it on turbo mode. So you c this is the normal speed, but if you hold shift your shift key and click the green flag, then it'll run uh, quite a bit faster. So yeah, um, right now you're probably seeing this sped up and uh yeah I'll just let this finish and then you can um we can do another one so yeah
Okay, so now the uh, program, after about 10 to 15 minutes, is done rendering. And uh, you can see I made a bit of a mistake here. I let it uh, see there wasn't enough material here, and the uh, explosion power was too high, so it went right through and got over to the edge, which meant it took a great deal longer. You can see it was held back by these walls, and it went a little further on blue because that's not as explosion resistant. Um, and this was because we had a lower explosion resistance at the beginning, or sorry, ex lower explosion power. And the explosion was actually emanating from this point over here. Um, so you can see that's it, not a, like over here in the actual center of our area. I might make a marker or something to show there. But you can see it generates quite an interesting shape. So now I'm going to start this over. And this time I'm going to fill the whole thing in with pink. Um, and then draw over top of that. That way we can uh, kind of see some things going on. Uh, instead of it going all the way to the edge and we can't see anything. So I'm just going to fill this in and then we'll make some barriers out of the different colors. So I'm just um, going to finish this up here. And so uh, it, the explosion starts at zero, 0, which is in the exact center of the screen. Um, that's good which is about here, so we'll just switch to uh, blue and do some of this light blue, orange, black, which is the most explosion resistant, then white doesn't have any explosion resistance at all, it's like erased, um, and then we'll do like some, or that's, I guess that's purple, this is the blue. So, um, yes, I'm going to start it, and we can see what happens. Okay, so you can um, see, well, at the end there, I, I probably should fix that. It kind of goes to your mouse pointer, so, um, yeah, and it keeps the color that it's on. Um, but ignoring that, you can see that clearly the ones with the higher blast resistance uh, didn't get as much of an indentation as the ones that did. And when it got up to the pink, it went the farthest, kind of escaped from this cup. Um, and uh, you can see the white didn't really have any effect on it. Uh, it actually went farther here because the white, like the pink has an effect on it of removing um, a certain amount of explosion power, but the white doesn't have any, so it was like uh, this section just got removed. Um, some more ending notes. The way to make it um, do the explosion to scan it out and draw the lines you hit the Q key um, you're going to um, and all like I said the number keys on your keyboard are what uh, change the color at the beginning so you can just uh, hit this uh, green flag and draw whatever you like um, and if you hit it again it'll clear if you mess up um, so the explosion power goes up to 50,000 uh, in case you want to do something with just the highest blast resistances. Um, so, yes, I hope you find this tool interesting at least. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.